what's been your biggest takeaway from your first two Army Navy games? Well, I tell you, the first one I coached in '19 was um, unlike anything that that I've ever been a part of. I mean, just the pageantry, the environment, uh, the energy. Um, it's a it's a huge, huge deal. I didn't quite realize it in, until uh, obviously I felt the pressure leading up to that game. But uh, when you're in that moment, I mean, it's just uh, it's a phenomenal experience um, if you can let yourself experience it, right? But it's just uh, it's, it's just a football game, but it, it, it obviously it's a, it's a big deal to us. Um, uh, it's it's um, maybe the the best game in college football. You know, I don't know other way to explain it other than just uh, it's um, awesome to be a part of. Um, makes you um, feel proud to be an American. Um, and just you've got to be careful about, you know, we tell our players all the time, you know, play with emotion, but don't let emotion play with you. And in that game, you know, that's the first time I've kind of felt that as, as a coach. Uh, and you you got to apply that to yourself as well. Uh, to stay in the moment and, and be dialed in and focused and not get carried away with, with the emotion of the moment and, and what that game means. Do you also do that in the two weeks leading up to it so the team doesn't get too emotional too early on in the preparation process? Yeah, you know, our, our kids are going to play um, extremely hard. We, we know that. I mean, the effort is going to be phenomenal on both sides of the football. And a game like this comes down to the team that I think can can focus in, dial in, and and and, uh, and execute. Um, you know, we say it all the time around here, the team that plays the hardest makes the fewest mistakes uh, when, wins the game, and that certainly applies in a game like this. And this is one of those games that's just uh, – you can't make mistakes. Um, you know, you can – you can stop the run, stop the run, and then you give up a big play action pass, and it's all for nothing. Um, so if you get your eyes in the wrong spot, um, you're misaligned by half a yard here or there, uh, it can cost you big time. And um, our guys know that. They know how important uh, the, the focus piece is. And, and we talk about our stance, alignment, key responsibility, technique, you know, our, our vision. Uh, our guys understand how important that is. In a game like this, it even gets uh, magnified even more. What do you like best about your defense going into the game? Um, I, I like our group, and I, I like how, how we play together. Um, we got a tough group that plays extremely hard. I think obviously we've we've um, we've made progress throughout the year from week to week uh, because we've got a lot of young guys playing. Uh, but I like how hungry we are. I like how excited uh, our, our players are about this game opportunity in front of us. I like how we're coming to work. Um, and, you know, it's, it's a resilient group that really, really hasn't flinched all year. Um, and uh, so I think we'll, we'll just continue to get better and better. And, and the great thing now is you know, last year we had a week to get ready, really three days uh, to get ready after a really physical Tulsa game. I think now we've got two weeks uh, to kind of, um, you know, number one, you know, physically recover. And number two, just, uh, you know, mentally uh, having, you know, five more opportunities and walkthroughs and things like that to practice is, is, is a tremendous benefit this year. Thanks a lot, Coach. Especially black off with the, with the young guys that, that we got playing um, that, that maybe haven't played as much option football as some of our, you know, our veteran guys have. Thank you. Yes, sir. Bill Wagner. Well, that's what I was just going to ask you about young guys playing in the Army Navy game, not only the nerves, but as you mentioned, the option experience isn't quite there. Um, you started a freshman inside linebacker against Temple, and he's going to be, you know, if he plays a significant amount of minutes, that's going to be brand new for him playing in any kind of service academy game. Can you talk about yeah. that? Guys like Rayon Lane, uh, yeah. you know, all of them, yeah. you know who they are. Sure. You're right. I mean, it's not it's not brand new to them, um, Bill, just because, you know, we go against our offense, obviously, and so they're not completely foreign to it. Uh, but it's different in a game like that. Um, and so, you know, we're going to do a lot of a lot of good on good this week. Uh, try to get some some full speed uh, reps against the option, which will be great for our younger guys. And, and again, just to, to have the extra week to get ready. Um, obviously, we're going to put as much pressure on those guys in practice as, as we possibly can. Uh, going to dial it up a little bit in that regard. And, and uh, those guys know, um, you know, how perfect we've got to be with our alignments, with our keys, with our eyes. Uh, they know how dialed in they have to be. And, and um, you know, we're going to figure out how to get our best 11 guys on the field that 
and I know we're going to fly around and, 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 uh, even, even just as important, um, they're going to do their job, um, and be locked in. And so that's going to be a challenge a little bit for us this week. Um, but I, I think, uh, our guys are ready. They'll, they'll embrace the way we're practicing this week and, and we'll, we'll get them ready. So what led you all to go with Ramos at inside linebacker? You had mentioned that uh, Coach Volker wasn't quite comfortable with the freshman just yet, but I yep. guess uh, Ramos finally got to the point where you felt comfortable put him in the game. Yeah, and he's one of those guys, Bill, that we, you know, I did as, as being a young, talented player that, that has a, a really bright future here, had, had a really good couple of weeks of practice. And, uh, you know, he's he's just showed up a bunch. And, um, you know, Fletcher was a little bit banged up. So that gave Ramos an opportunity to get a few more reps than, than he has. And, and uh, you know, like a lot of these guys, have, he, he took took advantage of it. And, and he's a really instinctual um, trigger player, um, which he needed a linebacker. And, and uh, really excited about him. Was excited about the production at that spot last week. Uh, it's been the most – Productivity we've had of our will linebacker position uh, we've had a long time. You know, between him and Fletcher, they had 14 tackles, um, a sack, uh, a college fumble, and a, and a bunch of other things. So I, I was pleased with that, with those two young guys. So what are you bumping Fletcher outside a nickel package? What what exactly is – if Fletcher seems like he moves around, is, or was he strictly – he and Ramos splitting time at will and that's it? Yeah, we made a decision to move him back to Will a few weeks ago. Um, we moved John back to the striker. Uh, so we're, we're rolling with that a little bit. He's, he's still got the ability to do both there. I'll, I'll pass it off to someone else for now. Bill Bergman. Coach, Navy uh, unveiled the Army-Navy uniforms earlier today. What are your initial thoughts on them? What? Uh, you know, I saw the video after, after our last game just briefly. I need to take a look at it again, but I thought the – I thought it was awesome. I thought they looked really good. Uh, I wanted to also then uh, touch on the young guys on defense. At a lot of schools, you know, they come in early in January or people redshirt. That's not the case here. Three months ago, they were just moving to Annapolis. Just how pleased are you in their growth in three months to now, not only be on the field, but to be seeing a significant playing time? Yeah, well, I never, you know, coming into the season, never really dreamed uh, that we'd have this many young guys playing, which is um, – you know, so you guys know how, how we dealt with some injuries uh, this year, uh, some unfortunate <clears throat> things in that regard. But I'm, I'm extremely pleased. I didn't think we'd have to play those young guys, and I certainly didn't think that they would do as well as they've done. Um, just because, as you mentioned, it's so hard to play here early on, especially the way our guys come in in the summertime. And we don't get to spend a lot of time with them, you know, as much as, as you would at other places. Uh, but <clears throat> to see where they've come from and their progress, where they're at right now and just the improvement on a weekly basis is really pleasing and uh it says a lot for our future here too yeah phil talked a lot about it you know the the growth in three months uh in a lot of the young kids who are playing uh, yeah you know, if you had a kind of gold and silver medalist like the two either upperclassmen or plebes um, you know, the, the one or two players on the defensive side of the ball who have improved the most or shown you the most growth uh, since they showed up for camp in August uh, to today, who would who would stick out in your mind? That's a tough question, John. Because when, when I go ever go down that path, there's always a couple of guys that I, I forget to, to mention. But I think really all those freshmen. Um, and so I, I mean I can't tell you how pleased I am enough how pleased I am with those guys and and not just the progress they've made. They're, they're obviously going to progress, right? And the, being coached, they're learning, but just the way that they've uh, attacked it the way that they come to practice and the way that they work every day. And, and I don't, you know, sometimes it takes a little while to understand not just the schematic stuff, uh, but the the standard and, and, and the way that we play, you know, the kind of effort that we play with, the kind of toughness that we play with. And um, coming out of high school, we don't quite understand some of the big picture stuff. And, and the fact that you're just a little piece of the puzzle, you know, those guys coming out of high school are all stars. And a lot of those guys, you know, like a Ray Lane, for example, uh, could run around back there and just go make plays. Um, and, and didn't have to really understand some of the things going on around him. Um, but, but those guys are, are growing in that regard. Uh, the, the effort is starting to be uh, to the level that we want it to be, and then the execution piece is getting better and better. And, and, um, and that's what you see with young guys. They, they learn from their mistakes, and sometimes you, you know, 
know, those mistakes unfortunately come in games, but that's just part of the of, of growth and experience. And that's when those things have to happen. And uh, especially when you don't have a couple of fall camps, a couple of spring balls to kind of work some of those things out. So, uh, but the, I said, there's a, a few of those gold medalists. Giants are some silver ones too, but I've been really pleased with, with all of them. So uh, I'll now transition to one of the most notable firsties on your squad. You know, Diego is about to play his last uh, college game. You know, the, say a pro scout before he plays in the East West Shrine game, you know, or, or gets invited to any, you know, postseason um, all-star game and they call you up and they ask you to evaluate whether he can play on the next level and what makes him so special. What, what would you tell that pro scout? So you better take him. You know, find a way to make your squad. Um, he's got the physical characteristics. And I, I think what separates him more than that, John, is the intangibles, the things that, that uh, you know, he, he had uh, probably before he got here, obviously, but the things that he's developed since he's been here, just the kind of leader he is, you know, his football IQ, his instincts, um, his passion for the game. Um, and the list goes on and on. But, um, you know, the intangibles are off the chart. And then you take – you know, his size and athletic ability, his instincts. Um, and that's, that's a really good combination for a, for a guy that can have success at the next level. And then last one for me is you start scouting Army. You know, who are the one or two or three guys on Army's side of the ball on offense that, that are really kind of hurting your head and, and you're highlighting and saying, this guy cannot beat us. Uh, this is going to be an area that we need to key on. You know, what are what are you most concerned about on Army's side of the ball for offense? Yeah, well, there's a lot of things that, that I'm con concerned about. Um, you know, we've got a lot of guys back on offense, obviously. Um, the, you've got two quarterbacks that are held. They're both really good players. That both have um, you know, certain strengths um, that we've got to understand. They've got, you know, two big physical B-backs are good players. Uh, two very good slots, uh, really good wide receiver. Um, and they are a good football team. And I think um, I think probably the best Army offensive football team, uh, you know, since I've been here. Uh, certainly, I think, um, you know, schematically, uh, they're doing a little bit more than they have in the past as well. So that, that makes it a challenge uh, to be able to get lined up and defend everything that they're doing. Uh, but extremely well coached, uh, play extremely hard. Uh, they're tough. Uh, take what you give them. They're patient. Uh, I think the biggest improvement for them is is their uh, their pass game, the play action off of some of the run stuff. And so, as I mentioned earlier, you know our eyes are going to have to be perfect. Uh, Communication is going to be perfect in the back end, and uh, you can stop the run, stop the run, and, and get your eyes in the wrong place for a split second. And this Army team, this offense, will take advantage of that uh, really, really quickly, as you saw, you know, in the Air Force game, hit them on some big play action passes, and so. They're just a really well-rounded, you know, in the past, I'd say uh, you don't worry about the pass quite as much uh, as you do this year. But they've got quarterbacks that can, can deliver the ball. Um, I think what they're doing schematically um, and the pass game is really good and they've got really good receivers to throw it to. Thanks, Coach. Sir. Sure. All right, we'll make another – oh, I'm sorry, Pete's joined us now. Go ahead, Pete. Coach, oh, to the point you just made, especially with their ability, uh, you know, in the play action passing game, is this a case where, you know, calculated sending of pressure from non-traditional places almost has to get home here when you do it? Because if they hit it right, you know, obviously they've got a chance uh, for a big play here with the way they've been able to execute that. Yeah, you certainly got to be able to, to do that. Um at times, uh, try to make them feel a little bit more, a little less comfortable about about some of the play action passes. Um, but yeah, I mean, we, we've got to be able to get pressure on the quarterback when they do that. And, and um, you want me to draw one up for you? What we're looking at, <laughs> of course not. Um, <laughs> you know, but to that extent, guys like Jamal, guys like Mikey, uh, Ray, Evan, the ability to come up in the run game the way they have uh, you get a lot of times. I mean, you guys have even played DBs that really don't want any of that physicality. This is a game where they have to be physical. They've already played that way. So you don't really have uh, that adjustment. How valuable is that having four guys in that part of the defense that will also get up there and stick their nose in it, just like your front seven. Will? 
Yeah, I mean, it's very valuable. I mean, if you're not a guy that's willing to throw your, your, your helmet in there um, and, and get dirty, uh, this isn't the game that you'll play in. So that's part of our evaluation process this week. And, um, you know, that, that piece of it is, is, is extremely important. Um, you know, and we've not played guys in, in the past or those guys have been in backup roles because we were worried about their ability to tackle or, or to take on blocks and, and to, you know, stick their face in there. So we'll make sure we got 11 guys on the field that, that will do that. Uh, I understand this is a, the most physical game we'll play all year. Mm -hmm. And uh, so our guys, you know, they've got to sell out in that, in that, in that regard uh, from an effort standpoint, as well as just uh, the toughness and physicality piece. And it has to exceed theirs. If, if you hit on this earlier, I apologize for the repeat question, but the guys that continue to transition uh, next to Diego, you know, you got – Colin, some meaningful snaps on the defensive side. In addition, obviously, what Fletcher's been doing for you. Thoughts on the way those guys have fit in next to, to Diego here with more snaps being asked of them? I think they've done a, a really good job. I think it's really beneficial for those guys to have a guy like Diego next to them. Uh, and, and in that meeting room with Coach Volker, um, you know, he's able to help those guys on the field with some certain calls. We put a lot on Diego. Uh, and if you had two veterans at Mike and Will, you might not have to put as much on his plate in certain regards, but uh, he's able to direct traffic back there pretty good. And, and you know, he's a guy that could go play well. He can tell those guys what they're supposed to be able to do. So it's really good to have him uh, on the field with those young guys. So we've got a good mix of, of guys that have been in games like this, understand the magnitude of it, um, and some young guys. But, and, but those guys are doing great. They'll be fine. Uh, finally, for me, I know we kind of take it for granted, but – I know when you hire coaches, when you bring in people to work with you, just as we've talked to, with Coach Niamatololo, you you know they're pros, you know they're good at what they do, but to see what your staff has had to do under some duress this year with a lot of moving parts and guys moving mm -hmm. in and out, uh, as you evaluate them, does that just reinforce what you knew about them already? Uh, because it's, it's easy to take that for granted when they've had to, you know, get a lot of guys ready to play, and those guys have stepped in and really played good football. Yeah, I just, you know, I, I think the world of our defensive staff, I think we, we probably get one of the better staffs in the country. Um, and, you know, I've, I've never doubted anything about, about those guys, but certainly it's good to see um, them develop those young guys as quickly as they have. And, and you know, we've, we've had coaches take guys in different positions and get them ready to play very quickly, and that's a credit to them. But now we've got a phenomenal defensive staff. I trust all those guys uh, completely. You know, some weeks like this, you might group guys together and meet together, things like that. I don't feel like we need to do that at this point. And, um, but no, I'm really super pleased with, with, the, with the way they get it. those guys have, have coached their guys, you know, not only getting them ready, for, you know, in the nuances of, of the game and the techniques and the fundamentals and that kind of deal, but just um, keeping them dialed in, the motivation, motivation piece, keeping those guys positive. Um, you know, it, it's easy to get down as a coach, too, when you're not having a great season. And so those guys bring their energy and juice every day. And and just like our players, man, um, they haven't changed one bit as far as the way that they coach and the passion, energy, and, and caring about their players. And so really pleased with with um, the way that those guys have done their jobs this, this year. Maybe talk a little bit about the Temple game. Are you happy about the way your guys bounced back from East Carolina? Yeah, it was good to go on the road and, and, and get a win. Um, certainly some things and you know, we talked about on Monday as we always do as a, as a unit things that you know some glaring spots I think that we need to improve um, in order to win win this game coming up um, it's always easier to get after your guys after a win and then it is a loss sometimes and um, so pleased with some certain things pleased with a lot of things that some of the younger guys did thought our two corners played maybe their best games of the year you know, Jamal and Mikey um, so, yeah, I think anytime you can, you know, hold a team to, you know, under 200 yards of offense, you know, regardless of who it is nowadays, it's not an easy task. And so we was pleased with some things we did, although um, there's certainly some areas that we, we definitely need to continue to improve in and get better, especially if we're going to beat a team like Army. Well, with regard to that, holding them to 182 and uh, less than 100, obviously, in both passing and running categories, anything in particular you thought the team did well and executed is – to make that happen? Uh, I thought our effort was, was, was really, really good. Uh, we flew around, you know, got the ball out a couple of times. Um, 
Uh, we're gonna make some adjustments during the course of the game, which is positive. Uh, but just kept playing, and uh, you know, I think um, you know our effort um, a piece of it was was probably the thing I was pleased with the most. Um, as I mentioned and alluded to, there's some uh, our, our pursuit angles uh, or things that we need to improve on. You know, our tackling specifically with some of the younger guys and just getting off blocks. Um, we got to do a much better job of that. But thought we flew around, um, thought we executed well for the most part. Uh, it was some of the fundamental type stuff that I thought showed up uh, against Temple that has to get better and has to improve, uh, specifically with uh, many of our younger players. Army's uniforms are 9-11 themed. Uh, we have, we've already had the game against Air Force on the 20th anniversary of 9-11, and now we're up in New York City where uh, there will certainly be some 9-11 anniversary pomp and circumstance. What, what does that mean to you? Well, I, I know that you're just focused on X's and O's, but as you prepare for the game and you play in a venue like MetLife, you know, what does the gravity of all that mean to you and reinforce about, you know, how special of a job you have uh, here at Navy? Yeah, I think it's just kind of the same things, John, that, that every Army-Navy game reinforces. Uh, just your, your pride, um, your gratitude for, for our, our service men and women out there and, and, and all that they do for us. Um, and it's just it's a thrill to be a, a, be a part of that. It just makes you feel like a – it's very patriotic, obviously, and just a reminder of the, the great kids we get to coach on, on a daily basis and, and have a ton of respect for those guys. Uh, up at West Point and the way they do things and, and, and how hard your kids play. And, and uh, so, you know, we we won't win this game as bad as any of them. Um, we have a mutual respect for one another, and, and uh, it's just awesome to be a part of it. Army-Navy is coming up in two weeks. How are you feeling? I'm feeling great. Uh, the team is very excited, and I think we're ready to work and get after it. Uh, I want to go back to the second quarter of the game against Temple. You had a series of five plays with three tackles, including two tackles back to back in the backfield. Um, just having a moment like that this early in your college career, what does that do for your confidence? Um, it does great things for my confidence. Uh, I think it's important to play with confidence, uh, but it was just about settling down after the first drive that I got and just kind of keeping my eye on my key and just playing natural. You went to Don Bosco, same school as Kevin Brennan. What was your relationship like with him growing up? Were you close with him? And uh, just what's that been like now that you're at Navy together? Um, yeah, I first met Kevin um, at the end of my freshman year when I started to work out with the varsity team and everything like that. And since day one, he was always a great leader. Um, he came in every single day working and just trying to help out everyone. Um, and it's, I, it was great to get the opportunity to come here and play with him again because he's just a natural born leader. And he's one of the best teammates I've ever had. And lastly, for me, the uniforms were released earlier today. What are your initial thoughts on them? Oh, they're great. The helmet's fantastic. I think, I think we're going to look good in it and just, you know, go out there and play great. How has it helped you having Kevin with you as you arrived on campus and being both a player and a member of the brigade, someone that you've known so well? Oh yeah. He's done great things for me. Like I've, before I got here for plebe summer, I've, I'd call him, I'd text him. He would help me out with, you know, telling me, don't worry, you know, just you're going to do fine. He would help me out with the things that he went through, what he struggled with. Uh, and I think just having a relationship with him like that helped my transition from, you know, going to a regular school to kind of military life. And he's just been a great teammate and a great person. That said, playing alongside Diego, who played a lot as a young player, like you're now getting a chance to, what has you taken away from him that he's been able to help you with if you, as you've been transitioning in now? Yeah, he's been great to just learn from, um, just from his efforts, his toughness. I think that's what I've admired most in him. Just like you can see that, you know, he plays the entire game and he never once complains about an injury, about, you know, being tired. So I think that's just something, the mentality that he's kind of instilled in all of us young linebackers that we need to have. We know what the coaches are saying about game plan and things of that sort for the Army game. But what have you been hearing from your teammates telling you what to expect as you go into that venue? Um, it's it's going to be a big atmosphere. You know, it's going to be a lot of fans, you know. But the main thing was just to stay focused. Don't let anything get too big. Just focus on your job and do what you're asked to do, basically. Did you ever think that uh, you'd be playing uh, on a stage like this? 
Um, I always dreamed of it. So, you know, that's what I've always worked for. So I'm just grateful and, and thankful for this opportunity. So uh, when did you find out you were getting the start? Um, during the week, I was getting reps with the ones. But then uh, the day before the game, he confirmed it with me that I was going to get out, going to go out there and get some playing time. And so was there no serious nerves? I mean, I know you've played some on the scout team this season. What what scout team units have you been working on for most of the season? What do you mean by that? Uh, have, you, have you been on the scout team? I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, special teams, special <laughs> teams. What special teams units were you on? Sorry. Yeah, it's, it's all good. Um, yeah, I'm on kickoff and kick return. Right. And so you had gotten game experience, but how is it different having to go in and play with the defense? Yeah, it was, it's a, it's a different adjustment, but um, I've always been getting, you know, reps during the week and practice with either the twos or the threes. So I was kind of just mentally taking reps too. So just kind of being ready for the moment. Uh, and that's, you know, that's the most important to me. You know, if, if you're not getting reps in the game, make the most of it in practice. So I've just kind of been trying to prepare mentally and physically in practice the best I could. And so what was the uh, evaluation from Coach Volker? Did you get a good grades or did you have uh, some things you have to work on? Uh, we just went over. You know, there's always things to work on. Um, I know that I have high expectations for myself. I, I'm never satisfied with, you know, with the, the minimum. So there's things I got to work on. There's positives, things to learn from both sides. And we're just getting ready to go attack Army. I was noticed on your bio that you were listed at 205. I'm guessing you've added weight since then. What are you checking in at now? Yeah, I'm 210 right now. Okay, not much, not much more. No. Yeah, um, not much. <laughs> playing inside linebacker at 210, that, uh, I mean, I think Diego's what, 250? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I just, I understand that I'm not uh, the biggest linebacker. So there's the way I got to play the game. I got to be fast. I got to be able to strike fast. Uh, I've always been, you know, I've always been quote unquote undersized. So I've learned how to play that way and just make it to my advantage. So what position did you play in high school, inside or outside linebacker? Or I played outside there? linebacker. I played outside linebacker early on, but then my senior year, I moved inside. Colin, uh, you're from North Jersey, uh, grew up in Wayne. What's this moment going to be like to run out of the tunnel at MetLife uh, right by where you grew up? Yeah, it's great. I have a lot of family coming out to the game, so. It would definitely be a good time. I just want to go out there with the team and get a victory. That'd be great. Tyler Fletcher, you guys are both freshmen uh, playing out there. What's your guys' uh, chemistry like out on the field? Yeah, we both went to NAPS together. So, you know, we've gone through a lot together. Um, you know, he's a great teammate, great player. And uh, we're just out there trying to make plays and support each other everywhere we can. I think you touched on it a little bit, but I'll ask you a little more directly. I mean, are you playing in an Army-Navy game? You've never played in one. You don't even know what to expect. Uh, they say even seniors sometimes, you know, forget their names. Uh, it's just a crazy atmosphere. I mean, are you? How do you mentally prepare yourself for this, or you can, or can you not? Whatever coach asks me to do, I'm going to do to the best of my ability. And you know, I like I said, I can't let. If I get an opportunity, I'm not going to let the stage get too big. Just focus in on my job and whatever is asked of me, I'm going to do it to the very best of my ability.